So good afternoon. Thank you for coming. After our, uh, our short hiatus, we are back um, to Everyone Has a Voice. We have um, some, I'm excited today because um, all the poets that we have featured here uh, from all over Massachusetts, Rhode Island, all over the state. Um, today, we are featuring a local Brockton poet, one of our own, homegrown. <laughs> Marcus Pierre will be our feature for today. We're going to also have our open mic. But I do want to tell you about an exciting event that we're going to be having on April 30th here at, the Ling here at the library in the Lingus Auditorium. We are going to showcase our teachers. So teachers from Brocken High, Cardinal Spellman, um, New Heights Charter, and professors from Bridgewater State, Massasoit, and a special guest from Suffolk University will read their poetry um, for us. Wow. Um, as I said, it's going to be not here, it's going to be downstairs in the Lingus Auditorium. Um, also, uh, attending will be the mayor, Councilman Farwell, and the superintendent of schools, Michael Thomas, will also be um, here. So let's spread the word. April 30th, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So with that, I am going to start off with a poem. And then I will turn it over to my host, Ali Brioso. So this poem I'm about to read um, encapsulates the turmoil that we're going through right now. And it's called Ancient Ruins. A day is but a moment among ruins. Ever-changing years seem to weave a seamless continuum of unbroken time over ancient broken sites. Yet why does the earth spin on its axis along the same sunny path? Why does this globe carry all our pieces in a closed loop? Sky blue and sky white mirror the sea, draw us into reflection, seducing us to delve into deep, separate oceans to seek origin. But when do we truly look at each other as species? specimens of the species human. Are we evolving or are we devolving? Scholars remind us to learn from our past or be condemned to repeat it. What have we learned from science, mathematics, religion, philosophy, and greed? Who gave us opposable thumbs to crush the future? Who gave us tools to create? Oh my God, what have we given rise to? We call ourselves compassionate, humane, and intelligent. As nations lay bleeding between fingers too tiny to hold the future. Why do so many hands squeeze out innocence in the name of what deity? Why do we seek sanctuary in time of suffering, seek safe passage, refuge and haven, but harbor leaders who turn eyes blind or away? Does Mother Earth feel her garden grow barren as her marrow is sucked out, while crimes against humanity regenerates like infectious cancer? We cry out animal at those who do us injustice. We snivel around mouthfuls of burned fat and guzzled spirits as we dread the cries of the silence that speaks to us. Arms, arms for the poor. And just where are we on the evolutionary scale? We wonder at ancient ruins and marvel at what was. I ask you, 
What do such acts foretell? Will there be anything to wonder of us? I wonder today among the ruins. Please welcome Al Briosa. Thank you, it's a pleasure, Philip. It's always a pleasure and it's always exciting once we come back and reunite, especially after many hurdles that we come through. The last time we were here was December of last year, so we have to catch up. Happy New Year. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. We're about to spring forward and winter is almost gone, but we're closing in it and we caught up. So thankfully for that. And with that being said, uh, I want to thank Paul Engel, director of the Brockton Public Library. It's very important and all staff in the Brockton Public Library who gets involved like Jonathan Stroud and many others uh, in the library because it's very important to foster and open doors where all the intellectual knowledge, community events, and everything that can happen and even as this, as we're having today. So it, it's, it's very, and we thank you and we appreciate it. And we also thank the Brockton Community Access TV. We thank that venue because, yes, it opens many doors. It opens many doors to the youth, to those learning in the industry of film, video, in, in audio, and in everything that entails of it, as well as it, it, in, it's an engagement of the community and it shares because there are many who are not able to come here for many different reasons to not come here and desire to be here. So it's also, we thank you for that. Also thank everyone who, who is loyal in attendance to come in here. We thank everyone who, who comes here to bring their creativity and art. We thank those who represent the city who also comes here in support of the group parties in general. This is not a political spectrum, this is a family community, but when they come, they come to support because we do need the city support because that's where funding comes. That's where all entities opens up to assist our communities in many broad spectrums. So thank you, City Council at Large, Rita Mendrez, for attending. We I also have to show love because I see Mark Lindy, who's always low key. And he's very grateful and a pleasure, him and the missus, which are, have very heartfelt many, many past uh, in regards to the poetry with Philip Pissaris. We had great interviews at the Brockton Community Access. Very, very, very warm, welcoming, knowledgeable history of Brockton, passionate of Brockton. And your heart is here. And even as you went close by, you're still here to support the community because that's what happens in a community. We have to, we spend our time, we grow, some stay, and some go, and then come back and show support because we're here to support each other. With that being said, I am going, as usual, I minimized it to just haikus because we have just come back, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I have to leave this beautiful shining light to the poet, open mics, and then we'll go to our features. So with that being said, at points of life, I feel at sometimes we take a standstill, especially after like COVID and everything that transpired. We don't know which direction. Wear your mask, take it off. Put it on, put it down. And here's my first haiku before I interview, before I call on to our youth poet for open mic. Seeking direction, surrounded by a dense fog, a slow step abroad. Anjali Andre is a loyal youth that comes to open mic. She is growing, she's confident, she's shy if you approach her, but with total respect, with all her special upbringing and support and loving from her mother, that's the right way a child and the adolescent should be. Welcome, Anjali. Hi there, I'm the usual, as usual, Anjali Android, and I made a paper airplane. <laughs> so. Did I ever tell you about the time that I got the school breakfast stuck in my desk? Yeah, well, we don't talk about that here. It took a while to get out, and then the bag ripped, so then I put it in my backpack. But then I had forgotten that lunch had already passed. So, yeah. And then, there's this one kid in school. It's always, nobody asks, nobody cares. Well, guess what? The vice principal's already took care of that. <sighs> There's nothing to do in school. You sit down, you learn, you eat lunch, you go to recess, you have science, you have a specialist, and you go home. Six hours of doing nothing. Thanks. 
And that's the way life goes, young or old or older. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will continue on with open mic. And what life entails of, and that's kind of my theme base, is a, a journey of life in general as we come back, and we reunite and reunite. And sometimes life just keeps you away from those you want to spend time with. We are so busy, not because we want to be, but because sometimes we have to be with duties and responsibilities. And it's most important to take a stop. So this next individual that comes, we're always like, oh, we'll have a moment, a moment, a moment. Yes, you know who you are. A moment, and the moment doesn't come, not because the heart is not there and we can't create the moment, but because life calls us to different ways. She's a caretaker and passionate humanitarian as well, as well as I am. So yet we have to sit, we have yet to sit down to have that cup of tea, to eat orange scones in Panera, or go to Corfinio and eat Italian food, or just sit outside of this momentum and have our personal time. But when we see each other, we encourage, and I let her know that the love is there. I am so excited when I see you. Your vibrant colors are welcome. And I wanna say, Trish Clinton, Come to open mic. Thank you so much for that, Allie. Um, I've been writing for quite a while, but you know, with uh, everything that's been going on, uh, I feel like things have taken, you know, several turns. Um, this poem was actually meant for Valentine's Day, which just passed, but I feel like there's never a time that your thoughts, your words, ever can go amiss. So I'll start with that. And it's called Love, Really? Love. It is a night full of passion or thrusting bodies of combustion in the universe. Is it shooting stars in a vast galaxy? Is it floating through dark sky abyss? Or maybe it's just a tender kiss. Stupid Cupid shot its arrow, hits me deep, penetrates into the innermost marrow. This is a cosmic connection. Two hearts at night ignite, beating shallow to one another. Morning dawns, he's gone. Will there be a tomorrow? How quickly two hearts turn into one solidary heart, and it's weakened. Did I get it wrong? Did I have a misfired engine? The very breath I had was stolen. Regrets, the only thing confirmed. It's the choice I've chosen. Butterflies in my stomach quickly become bee stings, no end to the pain. What's one to gain? This thing we call love was a phantom. It appears, then vanishes. Rejection rolls like a tidal wave into the sea, tossed to and fro, nowhere left to go. Life has been a series of misguided paths, months of friendship severed, sharp piercing alarms in my ears, fighting back a rush of tears, fell hard, from cloud nine, life's unkind. Could I see, but just chose to be blind? The thrills and chills shift into utter shrills. The forces of nature can't compare to the urges inside, about to burst open wide. Love's a battlefield, bombs blasting on all sides, no place is secure or safe. Sadly, this war has a similar feel, the same ammunition too, nothing to conceal. Too late to go back to start, shrapnel lodged deeply into my already wounded heart. It's killing me, yet I'm raging against the tide. It's a lie, I wanna believe you, that you're torn up over the many tears I've cried. Sledgehammer to the chest, but you said you loved me best. Falling hard on my face, gravity hurts so deep. Pick myself up, 
after hitting concrete. Those close to me I've turned to with their advice. It's their notions. It's just their opinion. They can't relate to my emotions because mine are overflowing oceans. It was gonna be different this time. Fate was chosen and I'm not it. Fighting demons within me, doing all I can not to quit. Reality is, I refuse to accept being used. So extensive torture I endured. Thinking you were the key to my happiness. But I see I'm deserving so much more. Some say it's real love. To love and be loved back, is that so bad? Love can be sad. So, is love the enemy? Or is it just the receiver who's been a deceiver? Finding out love can teach. Is there a man left there with pure intentions to make me believe in love again? Finding the love. The lesson learned was faster than the time before. Now release him and heal. This is love. Know that there's many capable but choose to be selfish. That's not love. You will be hurt again, but it's okay. Just take care of yourself. Love heals. Don't need to feel ashamed or let down. Just breathe in and adjust your crown. Self-love. Stand tall, drop the fiction, find facts. You've got value more than you've ever been shown. True love. Be con content alone. It doesn't mean you're lonely. Ignore the lies that you've been told. You can't let someone darken the dim light inside, because baby, you're worth more than gold. So love more, speak truth, be kind, not critical. Sing like a songbird. Forget that anyone's looking at you as you dance. This life is full of opportunities. Give yourself a chance. A little love can make the world go round, especially now. So, is love worth it? Though it feels like an enemy. Yes, yes, love is the answer, but it's also the remedy. Thank you. Beautiful poem. And the music is lovely with it, it's inspiring. <laughs> it just touches your soul and that's, a, that, that's another entity because when you think about creativity, it means is that you're pulling something from inside, you're pulling something from your experience of life, your energies, it, in, in all around, it intertwines. And the next uh, little haiku before I go into our next open mic, it's, it's a journey of life. And when I think about a journey of life, what I, as far as nature goes, the resemblance, I had chosen the Great Basin Bristol Cone Pine. So the Great Basin Bristol Cone Pine has been deemed the oldest tree in existence. Reaching the age of over 5,000 years old, the Bristol Cone Pine's success in living a long life can be attributed to the harsh conditions it lives in. And that kind of goes along with the poem that you described, and that goes along with life. And, and life, it is a journey, and this is my haiku with it, a journey of life, great basin, Bristol cone pine, aging gracefully. If you reach age after age in aging, consider yourself to be gracefully aging. Despite of the conditions, the appearance, or how you are aging, you have been truly best blessed to be rooted on the ground still, not as long as the great Bristol Cone Pine, but as long as God has given you your soul to be here, to share that energy and entity. So I encourage everyone to continue to be inspired, share your creativity, and the next open mic, definitely, I'm not gonna give a bio, because it's for the features, but he's also a great, wonderful person. And he wears different hats that I'm trying to catch up with. 
So when I get that rack of the hats that he has on it, I sure enough can try to see which hat is what before he takes the hat and puts it on till I catch up with him. So it's been a true pleasure for this particular individual that definitely assists also in City Hall, the Brockton Public Library, the community, the church, well educated, a journey of life, definitely understands immigration, definitely understands the American culture, definitely understands many, definitely understands knowing more than one language, understands different entities and has his perception and his way of creativity in such a humble, pleasant manner. Welcome for open mic, Joseph Polikin. As you all who has been here knows that now, I'm legally blind. I try to put everything big so I can see it, but I don't want to stop reading. The one that I'm gonna read for you now, it's called, It Is All Vanity. I hear you, philosopher. Oh, Solomon, I hear you. You say there is nothing for a pride, absolutely nothing worthy. But the cicadas sing so beautifully as if to say life is eternal. But, philosopher, you say nothing is uh, not nothing is eternal, Philo but nothing is sweeter than your words. The sun is busy. Oh, he is busy running. He is running in a loop. He takes every little rest in between shift to make and meet. Easy working hard to please the maker or humanity. I am sure that he is not working to pay for a bowl of soup. I hear the winds running down the hill to the south. He is as busy as he is working constantly. I see the sea, always hungry, never satisfied with what she eats, she must always have something to put in the fish mouth. I am feeling foolish, listening to the news all day. What I hear, what I heard happened last year, last month, and today, yeah, the same happened on earth before I existed. Oh, all we labor for, for will stay behind when, when death takes us. Life is a loop. It will keep going after this world end. Would there ever be peace among humankind? Humans will fight for vanity until an angel put them in prison. Oh, that will be something I better find an angel as a friend. Thank you. The next one is brotherly love. It is like an amazing river. It flows from the top of a mountain. It shows how we must love forever. It is a clear crystal fountain. It is like oil when we dwelled in unity. Let's build this precious community. It is like ointment in our, head, in our heads. It is good news to let that gospel spread. Draw the water for, for a brother. The power of the this, of this spirit is in that healing pool. Let's shower in it for cues. When we, when we really love, we can feel cool. Since our birth, it is, it is our missions. We are to love one another. Love for each other is our ambitions, and we, sh we share our faith when we gather. Let no colors 
wealth put barriers, nothing between us as his creators, that our battle to win as his warriors. If we stay together, our reward is greater. Thank you. One more, it is called, e Is It Worth Living? Oh, I think of my father, so enjoyed to care. I wailed, I wailed, and I cried till night. He suffered misery, no heart should bear. As far as I know, his children shall never unite. I think of my mother, so beautiful. I wailed, I wailed, and I cried till night. Her love for her children and humanity is, irre is irrefutable. What should our life be? She forgot to turn on the light. I think of my brothers. They died young. I wailed, I wailed, and I cried till night. Was death sweet then? I should watch my tongue. No questions. God is always right. I think of my sisters. They were so prudent. I wailed, I wailed, and I cried till night. Life on earth is like an accident or an illusion. Watch your tongue. God is always right. I think of my own life situation, I wailed, I wailed, and I cried till night. I am a very unique person by virtue of my position. I am, a, I am standing on a mountain, I am a light. What is the, the future of my offsprings? They are caring, innocent, and beautiful. Hold on to the light, my children. In the dark, sing. When I am not here, love and serve others. Be dutiful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Such a pleasant fill that we're going to continue on. And as we know, we're simmering up with winter. We're going forward, and at times we have to encourage one another. Sometimes we have the blues, they call it the winter blues, and sometimes we pass. And winter blues, when you think about the color blue, it comes in many shades. There are different kinds of shades of blue, as well as the different types of forms of blues that people have. Some have just small little stressors of depress, depression, and others have some deepened sadness, and some are reminded of some type of life event that occurred apparently and ironically tends to happen a lot during the holidays, which are in, during winter times, or things transpire as we've read, um, as Trish shared, of impacts of war. We are in the midst of a, of a war in, uh, in Russia, the Ukraine war. So there are many entities that causes one to think about win winter blues. And when we think spring is coming, which is this week, <laughs> it, you know, we think of excitement, enjoy great weather, positivity, we get to come out, and especially now that we can wear our masks down a little, get a little closer, but be cautious. And we think about, but we can't forget, and we think about the great flowers that go into blossom. And then we also think that we have to motivate and encourage one another to inspire each other and to continue for, uh, forward. And sometimes even within ourselves, we awaken. And during this moment, open mic is all about sometimes those come here confident and know they're gonna be on open mic. There's others that we edge on and say, in the midst of you feel that you wanna have a presentation in open mic before it closes, we welcome you. And that is because at the moment you feel the vibes, the energy, and something was said in the midst that has awakened that part of you to share. So before we close open mic, I would like to open it up to the silently with Vulcan because I see initials. So if you are present and you want to come, the open mic is for you. But first, I'll give you 30 seconds because I have my last haiku. 
Winter blue passes, spring forgets me nots, awaken inside. Come on up. <laughs> what really hap happened in the beginning? This morning I had a spark. My room was dark. You see, I am always scheming my next artist project. Morning, day, evening, and night. Man beast, I thought blindly, but the image was really the image of a wolf with a gorilla's body. This is the image I wanted to draw. The comic book I was borrowing coincidentally had the image, it was titled Shadows of a Vampire. No, this thing was not a vampire. It was Satan, but Satan's image was said to be a serpent, not a man beast or a dragon. Adam was alone. God made Eve. The reason I thought why, I, ca I can't tell. They were naked, but does having a penis or a vagina make a male or female? That fruit of knowledge made them smart or dumb. God is admitted he's, his jealousy in the Bible. Was it a planted trap talked, um, talked out with the devil? The image of God. Were we, were we becoming like him? Were we becoming better? Also wise and crafty? Did we need a test, a challenge, or a distraction? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's great for closing open mic because the way that everyone has a voice and the way that it works and the way that I host is intertwining everything and everyone that has come into play. And with that closing statement, it's very powerful and strong because to me, it signifies diversity and inclusion. Diversity and inclusion signifies that we as people, it's natural to have faith. Faith just means a, a substance for things hoped for that are not seen. It doesn't say a religion, a name, a title, or anything. It just means that the human individual naturally believes and has hopes, and that's how you overcome. So I thank you for taking the moment to, to emphasize that. And, it, and it's not about gender, it's not about creed, color, or anything that can divide, but the unity that we have here in, in the transparency and the beauty it's what makes art the ability where you say, is there such thing as freedom of speech? There is in the areas of the arts. So with that being said, we have a wonderful supporter, employee of such a great time. I don't know how many years, but I know he's been here for quite some time and assist those who come into the library he becomes part of the community, of those who are in organizations, associations, want to utilize, have community events. He, ha he also is uh, working along the side with Philip Casaurus and other entities outside of Everyone Has a Voice. And I'm grateful to know, to share the opportunity with Everyone Has a Voice in presenting you, Jonathan Stroud, as you will present the feature of today. Welcome. <laughs> So Ali, earlier today, uh, you said, Jonathan, do you have anything for us today? And uh, you inspired me, so I do. So I'm going to read something really quick. Uh, and it's entitled, And There Was Light. And there was light. What does light feel like? A warm, sunny day in the middle of the summer. What does light look like? That thing your eyes are drawn to in the midst of darkness that brings hope. What does light smell like? Wood burning on a cold winter night. What does light sound like? The sound of your voice that brings a smile to my face. What is the light? The second letter in the word, we are the light. Oh. 
So our feature poet for today is Marcus Pierre, and I've actually had the pleasure to attend school with him. And Marcus Pierre received his associates in psychology at Massasoit Community College and is receiving his bachelor's in psychology in May at Bridgewater State University. Marcus is of Haitian descent. He's also a Christian, and his poetry contains references from the Bible. The overall purpose of Marcus's poetry is to empower, enlighten, and entertain. Marcus Pierre is a firm believer that poetry is an art form that is timeless. And I'm introducing Marcus, thank you. Hello everybody. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Marcus Pierre, and I'm a spoken word artist. And uh, I'm here to you know, recite six pieces of poetry uh, to everybody. But before I do so, uh, I just want to say that uh, it's amazing, you know, watching everybody recite their poetry and everything that they've written. You know, it's very inspirational and very powerful for everybody to feel confident to share their work, to share their poetry. This is what it's all about, community, uh, all of us coming together and expressing what we love to do. So I appreciate you guys and I love you guys so much. And the last two years have been tumultuous, has been very wild and chaotic, but the one constant in all of this, along with God, of course, is our voices. You know, and today's event gives us the opportunity to use our voices to express our creativity, our positivity, and our overall passion and gift, which is poetry and, and, and love, and, and expressing love too. So uh, without further ado, uh, here's my first piece of poetry. It's called Time, and here it goes. Time. Everyone has 24 hours. Miracles are obtainable in their hours. To change your life, you have the power. Time is an interesting concept. Even though life is a marathon, it should be treated as a contest. Life is a process. No one is a finished product. We're all a work in progress. We're books with chapters that are filled with compelling content. Time isn't promised. It should be spent paying homage to those who demolish barriers. To be honest, your calling is an investment. Spend time and profit. Strike while the iron is hottest, like the weather in August. The hours in the day might be long, but life is short. Much like a vacation, your suffering is something to unpack, but hostility isn't something to resort. Even if there's five seconds on the clock, dribble the ball down the court. Life is like an alarm clock. When you don't wake up, it's alarming. Find your niche and start carving. Like the Bible, even if something is tempting, banish all serpents from your garden. Don't buy into their jargon regarding your calling. Your mind is a pencil that needs to be sharpened. Erase your enemy's markings. Time flashes in an instant. Our mission is to listen to those who are brilliant and apply the knowledge that is given. But your enemy is resistance. For instance, your enemies have a commitment to create a distance between you and your mission. But in the midst of their infliction, God is proficient. Do not repay evil with evil, for in the Bible it is written. But whether or not you're a Christian, you're driven in this power in your existence. Time should it be taken for granted. The waves of life can cause us to feel frantic, but don't panic. The island of despair can cause us to feel stranded. If the waves are too high to manage, God will hand you the life jacket of hope, but it's up to you to take advantage. Much like a horse, gallop with power so that those in your barn are stable. Your problems might multiply, but stick to your timetable. A confrontation should be handled with a conference or a conversation. Hatred hurts the hater more than the hated. It's ironic how negativity is sickening, but positivity is contagious. No matter what cards you dealt, dealing with rage is a gamble like Vegas. Obstacles may come your way, but keep moving like the hands on the clock. While planning your shots, keep moving up the ladder and advancing your spot. Be the ball player on the court that's the man in the rock. If your peers don't support you, feel free to abandon the flock, even if they're your companion or not. Your mental health is wealth. Make sure that you manage your thoughts. Value every second, hour, and minute. We might want to rush while the clock is ticking. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. Do your best with the time that is given. Don't defeat yourself before you're in a winning position. We can do all things through Christ. Remove all limits. You're gifted like Christmas. Whether or not you're in a courtroom, don't judge someone who's going through a trial. Just witness their testimony and either offer the help or hope that everything works out like fitness. Now's the time to escape from your place of comfort. Now's the time to heal in areas in which you suffer. Now's the time to build with the words that you utter. Now's the time to feed your soul and put an end to your hunger. Time. Thank you. <clears throat> so 
My next piece is called Your Worth, and here it goes. Your Worth. Words hold weight and they're filled with power, yet at times they are used to devour the soul of a person who internally towers over the person. He spewed venom their way. The serpent is a coward. He's also a merchant who wants to purchase your purpose. He knows that you're worth it. He's tossing and turning. He's yearning to cause a disturbance. He knows that you have longevity, so he wants you to short circuit. He knows that you're sharper than a swordfish. You are significant. Don't believe the insults from the hypocrites. Small people resort to belittling. They're trapped where they stand and their sand is quickening. You're number one, like a guard that is dribbling. God knows your heart and his love is infinite. Even if your heart is torn like a ligament, beware of those who resort to undermining. They seek attention that's undivided. You may be under pressure like a diamond. However, your vision is in plain sight like a pilot. Weather the storm regardless of the climate. Not everything needs a response. You have the right to remain silent. Remember to give yourself a rest. You're tailored for success. You're well suited for great things. Remember to invest and be your best. Hate is jealous. Time is precious. Anger can wear you out like a necklace. You may be tempted to be reckless, but hatred is a debt that's collected. There's power in free will. You could seek thrill or be still. Adversity can feel like a steep hill. Your quirks are necessary. All storms are temporary. God is the father and grace is hereditary. We are all moving our mountains. Grace pours into our lives like a fountain. Every ounce is boundless. Your blessings are countless. A revelation is the rain for every judgment that is clouded. Be the voice for the soundless. Never backwards, always forward. Move towards the door of opportunity to ensure order. You're a house and faith is the mortar. God is in your corner. Your name may not be Oliver, but life can throw you twists. But you have to make your way out of the orphanage. Adopt the faith that you need to develop the grace to succeed. However, the pace of your speed can make you believe that you're in a race with others and you're not in the lead, but life's a marathon, not a 40 yard dash. Stay in your lane to avoid a car crash. Before the birth of your dream, it's a fantasy. Your dream is your idol. You have to be a fantasy. When opportunity knocks, answer the door. When opening can change the game, even if you have a losing score. Much like 7-Eleven, it's convenient how much we have in store. The fruit of your spirit can grow. There's a seed in your core. There's always glory down the road. Break the mold as the story unfolds. Fiery passion is a security blanket when times get cold. Seeing is believing. Haters can be deceiving, but leading creates achievement. See? Life is like an ATM. Take things into account to maintain your balance. You're full of talent. Whether you're a king or queen, guard your palace. Being mistaken for a jester is none of your business. That's just your nature. Uh, bless, uh, be a blessing to others. A kind gesture can go a long way. The decency of others may be buried, but you're the treasure. See, triumph is born out of struggle. Develop your game plan. Have those you trust in your huddle. For they'll help you recover the ball if you fumble. Dig deep. Perseverance is your shovel. If your future is up in the air, then continue to juggle. Your purpose is bigger than yourself. Forget your bank account. Your knowledge is wealth. Malice is like a drug that destroys your brain cells. Knowledge has value, and in the real world, your brain sells. Faith is needed during an emergency. If you don't think you'll make it, just emerge and see. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the next piece that I wrote is called Perseverance, and here it goes. <clears throat> Perseverance. The bruised and battered were misused and splattered and abused and staggered. They were also left confused and shattered on the avenue of hazard. Human roadblocks, they try to dictate our own thoughts. They ultimately want to burn us like stovetops. Your enemy has a tendency to tear you down mentally. Their jealousy stems from your identity and your soon-to-be-fulfilled legacy. A chef of chaos can dish out a verbal explosion to their victims, which can lead to emotion that leads to a notion. It can make victims of their steam rolling feel broken. Brokenness is a barbell on our shoulders that needs raising. Broken, brokenness can make you feel dried up like a raisin. Sometimes it comes from the place that we were raised in to be the light amongst the darkness let you raisin. Your opponent is broken. They fire missiles at your dream ship with hopes to drown you, but you're still floating. You are not broken beyond repair. Take care. Life is like a carnival, but try to see how you fare. There might be days where you feel like a flat tire, but spare the strength to handle situations that are dire. Wear your imperfections. Be the model for your retire. You're rare for your purpose. Your soul is required. Tear down the doubt of your haters. Rip up their flyers. Share the wealth with others so that you can go higher. Broken people break others to fill a void. 
but that's something to avoid. Put your fortitude to work, find some strength to employ. Your cracks and crevices are made by your nemesis. Forgive your foes for their own negligence. You have a purpose and your heartbeat is your evidence. We have a massive amount of endurance. Even when life crashes, allow for your drive to be raised like insurance. The public eye is upon you. It's normal to get a bunch of stairs. Take the steps of success and climb a bunch of stairs. Fly high, increase your altitude. You might have been bitten by snakes, but don't let them rattle you. How you handle the snake's venom is predicated on your attitude. Whether or not cruelty is what someone is accustomed to, respect is accustomed, and love is accustomed to. Your haters are fueled by spite, and that's a given. Misery loves company, and they want you to give in. Like a flower, grow, but see what the root of their problem stems from. The flock will come after you because you have the breadcrumb. Much like a cashier, transformation is something to register, but keep the change. Start a new chapter and turn the page. You're not the bird in the cage or worm on the blade. Whether or not you're earning a wage, be a living testament to those learning your name. To persevere is to persist. Perfection is in a land that doesn't exist. Even though your enemies had pain to inflict, your oppressors have no class. And like school, their class is dismissed. Their dismissal is meant to sizzle, but your future is clear like a crystal. They may use verbal hammers and try to chisel away at your joy, but be the engineer in your life and be civil. Awareness is food for thought, and it's an idea to consume. Carry a blessing like a mother's womb. Inner peace is something to acquire. Be in tune with your melody like a choir. For growth, honesty is the best policy. Make strive to continue to advance like technology. But when life knocks you down, stand up like comedy. But pain is no laughing matter. However, joy is the cure, so laughing matters. Much like alcohol, there's proof that your spirit is strong. So take a shot on yourself. Forgive those that treated you wrong. Success comes to those who are resilient. Weariness is real to those who can feel it. But God will sign to and deliver a shield to those that need it for life's sword wielding. But if you don't talk to the Lord while kneeling, then that's cool. Make sure to have a fan who wants you to win, who wants you to go through your ceiling. Greatness is within you. There's no point of concealing. Go with your gut like a feeling. You don't need to fall asleep to start dreaming. When you persevere, it's frame. Thank you. constant water breaks guys <laughs> sorry about that um my next piece is called potential and uh here it goes potential potential is soothing it's the possibility of an occurrence before events begin brewing it's also the seed that is watered before flowers begin producing potential dwells in every human however potential is not a place to live in your gift is the key but potential can be a prison living beyond your potential is a very important mission but every hero has a villain. Don't give them permission to interfere with your ambition. For your dream, there are no restrictions, but the sky is the limit. You have an infinite amount of potential. Don't settle for a level that'll cause you to be regretful. You're special. Negative thoughts can be detrimental. Your potential provides endless possibilities. To turn your potential into a reality is your responsibility. You're at liberty to blaze your trail in any industry. Secure is rightfully yours with the utmost consistency. You have the ability to change your life instantly. In the midst of chaos, tune out all the hostility. You have the notes that, that's instrumental in conducting your own symphony. You're destined for much greater. Do yourself a favor. Step into your calling sooner rather than later. Your future is yours to govern, and you are the mayor. You're enough. It doesn't matter if your edges are rough. Your enemies might invite you to gamble with your life, but it's just a bluff for you to lose touch with yourself. The goal of the enemy is to put you on the shelf, but don't sell yourself short. There's more that you have to offer. Craft your ceramic dream, you are the potter. Start a new chapter in your story, you are the author. Prescribe yourself time to heal, you are the doctor. Water and harvest the plants of joy, you are the gardener. We are the sons and the daughters of a father who has blessed us with gifts that keeps on giving. But it's up to us to untie the ribbon and start shifting the atmosphere with a vision. The devil is working overtime to stop the divine plan that God designed for you to shine. Your calling will allow you to be more defined an opportunity is a treasure and is more to find. You're not a dog, so with your greatness, unleash it. Life is about humility. Be humble for every achievement. Don't worry about negative people. Life is about opening the doors of success and not looking through the peephole. Your potential is something to recognize and your goal is something to emphasize. Those who discourage you have demons that they have to exercise. Their goal is to jeopardize. Abuse is bacteria that you have to sterilize. There are steps to their deception. Don't fall for their sterilize. 
When you live above your potential, your haters will take notice, but know this. Your work ethic reminds your haters where they're lacking, so stay focused. Providing for the next generation is the motive. Your faith can move the waters like the staff of Moses. Stay close to those who stuck with you when you were at your lowest. Life is like a horse. Go along for the ride like an equestrian, but it's our job to make the most out of the quest we're in. God is good in all ways. He'll be there for you always. That's ironic how on your path, trust goes a long way. But if God is not the one that you seek, have people who will help you get through the days and a week or whenever you're in the days or feel weak. But regardless of creed, your potential is the valley after the mountain, but your actions will guide you past your peak and your promised land will be seen. Potential. Thank you. So um, my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my uh, second to last piece is uh, called Inner Strength, uh, and here it is. <clears throat> Inner Strength. Strength is internal. Endurance is needed to overcome any hurdle on the obstacle course of life. Your life happens in stages. You start off as an empty vessel and go through many phases, but the times are always changing. So we have no choice but to evolve and dissolve all tendencies that might contribute to your fall. Struggles of all sizes, small or tall, need your consent to dial in all worry, but don't answer the call. But all in all, the house of God is furnished with the finest furniture and murals from wall to wall. But to evolve is to grow. The foundation of reaping is to sow. To teach is to bestow. So go and mold the souls with lessons and quotes that will further the progression of those who heed your message and grow past the tensions and woes that was wrecking their boat and pretended to float, but it's our job to help them and show our love and letting them know that they're important while giving them direction and hope. There's power in all your words, every adjective, noun, and verb has an effect whenever it's heard. There's also power in the tongue. Our words are music for those who are among. among. However, the DJ is accountable for the record that is spun, regardless as a song that is sung. With our words, we can either build or destroy. Our words are why we're either concealing our joy or they're the reason why we kneel and rejoice. Much like a mixed martial artist, life can feel like it has you in a chokehold and you feel like tapping out, but you could always submit to God's will. His anointing and grace can fill your cup and cause it to runneth over and spill. The blood of Jesus paid for our sins. God covered the bill. God will bless you even when you're not sneezing. Everything happens for a reason. Giving is better than receiving. Be mindful of snakes. Looks can be deceiving. God knows where you're headed. Whenever you're hurt, he'll be there for you like a medic. God's promise is documented, but the devil's papers need to be shredded. It's okay to get rest because your strength is embedded. You're not a rodent, but when it comes to your dream, go for it. Much like community college, the degree of your success depends on your associates. If your friends are moving in a different direction, cut ties when it's appropriate. You don't have to be a carpenter to start building. Your enemy's words might have scratched you like a lottery ticket, but you're one in a million. Our job is to apply ourselves and seek happiness. We're above quitting. As for the wolves in sheep's clothing, pardon their involvement. There's no benefits in prolonging a conflict. Uh, sparring with the enemy can result in the black eye, which can prevent you from seeing what God has promised. Marching forward despite the mayhem is a trait that's found amongst the strongest. It's tough being in a crisis. Through a dilemma, you might not feel strong, but Christ is. Confide in Christ so that your conscience is clear like a sinus. The blessings of the Lord is for you. He is dependable. God serves his children and his word is edible. When it comes to greatness, there are no exceptions to the rule, but you are exceptional. Whether your status is single or marital, you're incredible. Watch those from a lens who partake in a spectacle. Abuse is not acceptable. Those who throw dirt on your name won't prevail in your burial. Even though they try to rip you apart, you're not terrible. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so my uh, last piece, and uh, it's called Legacy, and here it goes. <clears throat> legacy. Your legacy is a story that is told. Many will witness when the story unfolds, so be bold, turn your life into a great movie, and know your role. Whether you're younger or older, your life is art and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Regardless of one's identity or pedigree, we all have a destiny. Go after your legacy with sheer intensity. In the soccer game of life, your enemy had the tendency to commit many penalties and resort to extremities. Remain strong mentally and find your specialty. Apply your craft incredibly so that you have longevity. Make sure to do so successfully. Design your dream and be the architect. Your actions are arrows 
and your goals are the bullseyes that you like to target next. God ordained your path and he's behind all your steps. You'll have an attainable surplus. You're a capable person. You could conquer a lot with unbreakable worship. You could be the first to break generational curses. No one is excused from situations that are urgent. No one is perfect. A mistake is like a stain, but learning is the detergent. Know your surroundings and be observant. Regardless of the amount of money that you're earning, always make sure that you're a wonderful person. You have a mouth for a reason. You have a lot to say. Your dialogue creates avenues to be traveled to. God will make a way. Things will happen in due time. Rome wasn't built in the day. Leave something for the next generation. Indeed, at will. Your dedication can help you see what's real. Your education can retrieve the skill. Your elevation can clean the spill. Your revelation can be the pill that is ingested and heal a faulty perspective. No need for vengeance. Bitterness is expensive. It'll cost you your friendships. It can create a lot of tension, not to mention it's ironic how you need some unconscious to help you come to your senses. There's power in every lesson. Protect your peace for your perf uh, protection. Your purpose is not in question. Pursue your profession with aggression. Don't fear rejection. Allow for it to be the fuel for your engine. If problems appear, it's helpful to talk them out with a peer. Adhere to a confidant who will lend an ear and diminish all fear. God loves us despite our sin. The devil wants to burn you and commit arson, but God has given us an arsenal. The enemy wants to make you feel marginal, but nothing is impossible. You were made to be phenomenal. Your legacy is a great menu. Decide who you want at your table. If you need help moving forward, God will lend you a cane because you are able. In the zoo of life, God will give you animals to tend to, hold your horses, you are stable. A legacy is something that's left behind. There's things we're going to have to play out. Don't press for one. All your goals are disputable. Your greatness is not all your, great, all your goals are doable. Your greatness is not disputable. Stand tall against the rain. Stand tall so you can reign supreme to live your dream. Legacy. Thank you guys. I love you so much. Thank you, Marcus. That was very inspirational, very motivational. And it, sh it sheds light. Um, as you're walking into your journey of life as a young adult, you have such wisdom, life's experiences. But seeds planted within your soul, whether it's from life experiences or your upbringing or just your natural perception and the gift that you have been blessed with to have a, a way of seeing life, it motivated and inspired you to study psychology, which means that you want, uh, there, there's, when one studies psychology, per my idea of it, uh, it's an understanding of the humanity surrounding you and understanding at a, at a level of of who they are, how they are, what they are, so that you'd know how to be amongst humanity without causing more harm and, and cause, how can I say, without causing more harm, it's better to cause good. We all come with our baggage, we all come with challenges, and sometimes it's just mere misunderstanding. And with that being said, I also want to state that, again, diversity and inclusion is important because faith and spirituality come in many ways, many cultural ways. And we, it's been since December. I said, Happy New Year. We passed Black History Month was another month that passed by. We're also entered and we are currently in what's considered International Women's Month. Actual date was March 8th, and, but we are active in it. And I emphasize on that uh, because it's not, there's a lot of history ground, whether in America or externally, that a journey of life, everything that we've heard today, it emphasizes that there's so much that goes on in humanity in one individual. There is, for me, the way that I see our now today society, we've forgotten some of our heritage and roots and some of our struggles. A lot involved in our distractions uh, where we could more come together in a, in, in a more humble manner in support. And with that being said, I myself, as a woman, I'm not just a woman, I am a daughter. My mom had passed away, so she may be in the heavens, she is in the heavens from up above, and she will always be my mother as my first woman. Experience, but I've had many women that's come along my path to share what it is to be a virtuous woman on this journey of life with uh, great inspiration. And I myself am a mother, I myself am a, I'm a grandparent, but I manage multi generations, so I understand certain entities, as, as Marcus shared, stay focused. And that gravitates to many different phases of life from childhood to adolescence 
to a young adult, to an older adult, even to a, an, an uh, of age adult, and continuously and beyond because there are multiple phases of life. And with that being said, during my journey of life, I would say that you come and you bring a light out. You, you do get many challenges and many, many hurdles, and you will lose some and go some because when you have a creativity, you have something bursting in you that's thrusting forward, there's a great chance that many do not understand you or many are not are like you because you're very unique in your way because you have something to bring to this mother earth. You have something to give to this humanity. You have something to share, to thrust forward others. You might not move one, you might move some, you might move many, or you might just move none because you actually need to move yourself. And with that self-love, self-perseverance and, and just overcoming the hurdles. Just keep your faith, let the light shine, and don't hesitate because as long as you give without expectations, then you don't know the impact that you have on this nation, let alone to anyone. And I say that because it was honored. I sat on my desk, and I, I am a Hispanic woman of color. I do work for white corporate America, and that was a journey of life. Until this day, it's still a journey of life because I continuously have to, have to evolve myself there. And I thank gracefully to God uh, for the opportunity because diversity and inclusion comes in many different ways. Where I'm getting that with this is that in our community, you don't know who's actually watching you, who's acknowledging you, or who feels that you have something to give to the community. And I thank Philip Hazaris for offering this opportunity for everyone has a voice. Because when I come here, I usually come as myself to host. I'm not like preparing myself. I'm coming here to see, to feel the vibes, the energy of every individual, and what, what I feel like my journey of life, how can I co compose it and even to a haiku and then vibe with everybody else's because we're on this history timeline, whatever age we are in this room, whatever gender, creed, or color, we're here right now. Our time will pass. Our time will pass and what we have to give is most important. So I encourage everyone else to continue, everyone to continue the creativity. Marcus, congratulations on your upcoming graduation. Yeah. Always know that open mic is, is here. Always know you can come. Open mic is available to you. We look forward to continuously working with you. I encourage you with your, your inspiration and poetry. As you know, we have youths like Anjali who comes here regularly. And in general, you're like the next level phase because you're graduating from college. Then we have uh, um, adults and, and we have all different variations of ages where individuals come to express themselves and we motivate each other because creativity it, does, it it's never too late to pull something out of yourself to share so welcome everyone when we're here we welcome you and um, feel free to be inspired and take the mic now I pass this mic over to Philip Hasaurus and he will share the next upcoming, everyone has a voice, and any other creative information he has to share as far as poetry and the arts. So that was an amazing uh, poetry reading, Marcus Pierre. Also, we had our open mic, Angelique and Tricia and SH and Joseph. Um, we always welcome, as Ali said, our open micers. And I want to um, especially thank Ali for being such a wonderful host and inspiring everybody. So we will be back next month, um, April 16th, um, with Sam, Samantha Libby, and local poet Evangie Jacques. Um, 15 years old, writes wow. his own poetry. Wow. He will be our student teacher. Um, I want to remind everybody um, once again, our um, showcase for our educators, from teachers to professors, April 30th, 2 o'clock in the Lingus Auditorium. All these teachers um, are going to be coming, representing our local schools, reading their own poetry to inspire their teachers, um, their students. So, 
And of course, um, this wouldn't be happening without Jonathan Stroud. So, big round for Jonathan Stroud. And none of this would be happening without Paul Engel, the director of the library. So, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And I hope to see you all again next month, April 16th. We'll do it all again. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jonathan Stroud, and I am the head of adult services. And I'm interviewing today Marcus Pierre, who is our feature poet for Everyone Has a Voice. Jonathan, how you doing? Doing well, Marcus. How are you today? I'm doing good, doing good. Can't complain. All right. So, Marcus, I have a few questions for you. Uh, my first question. What was an early experience where you learned that language has power? I would say the earliest experience that I had where I learned that language had power was when I first learned about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, remember it vividly, I was in the second grade, I was in the middle of the class uh, in Raymond School in Brockton, um, and my teacher taught everybody about Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, and she said one thing that stood out to me very vividly which was Martin Luther King never fought with his fists, but he used his words to fight, you know, and he used his words to combat racism, prejudice, and inequality, you know. And so um, when I learned that uh, he gave sermons and preaches and had positive messages to create equality for all, I uh, realized at that very moment that language had power, you know, and it inspired me. All right. So Mark Hassan. How long did it take you to start sharing your poetry? To be honest, it took a while. <laughs> it took a while. Um, so uh, the very first time I started sharing my poetry was back in 2013. Um, and in that year, I was going to Massasoit. And at the time, I went through something you know, pretty tough. Uh, and so I wanted to share what I was going through in a poetry format. And so um, I had the desire to write it down. And um, it was just like a very uh, spiritual experience where I wanted to share my poetry. But I, the thing is, is that I didn't know where to go, so to speak. So, you know, I asked God, God, you know, uh, where can I go to share my poetry? You know, and so, you know, lo and behold, um, I went on the Massasoit events uh, list and I saw that they had a uh, mic drop event called Massasoit Mic Drop. And so it just instantly clicked. I went, but I was very nervous, you know, it was very tough because it was very nerve wracking my first time sharing my poetry, you know, but, um, you know, I got through it and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, made a lot of friends and it inspired me to continue to go to uh, poetry readings and uh, open mic nights and the rest is history. All right. So Marcus, uh, how do you think you've evolved as a writer over the years? I would say in a few ways. Uh, one way is my formatting. Um, so now my uh, poet, uh, my poems are a lot longer now. Uh, they used to be like about a minute long uh, in the beginning. Now they're about three to four minutes and things of that nature. And I would also say that I'm more confident as a writer. You know, like I shared before, I was very nervous, you know, about sharing and stuff like that. I used to doubt myself a lot, you know, put all this pressure on myself. Now um, the pressure has um, lessened a lot and I'm a lot more confident now in my writing and just my overall uh, pursuit as a poet. So uh, those are the two ways that I've evolved as a writer. Okay. So personally, as a poet, I don't expect the reader to interpret my poem as I've written it or to obtain the same feelings, but to arrive at their own conclusions. So what is your vision for your poem? So my overall vision is to empower uh, people, to remind them how great they are, uh, whether they believe in God, whether they don't believe in God, I wanna remind them that uh, they're great no matter uh, what their creed is, what they believe and things of that nature. And overall, my uh, vision is to make people feel good about themselves, you know, cause um, you know, right now we're going through a tough time and uh, poetry gives me the opportunity to make others feel uh, great about themselves, to uh, empower them, to educate them, enlighten them and uh, you know, give them something to uh, smile about or something to think about. You know? So it just gives me an opportunity to do several different things. All right. So just building off that last question, tell us some of the influences that have inspired you as an individual. I would say the two main influences are my mother and father. Uh, my mom, uh, there was a point in time where she was working two jobs to support me and my sisters. 
and um, she always prided herself on hard work, determination, and integrity. And those very principles are what I embody to this very day. And uh, also my dad too, um, you know, he used to be a pastor. And so he used to, um, you know, preach uh, at the church that I went to, which had several pastors. But my dad had this like unique ability and it still amazes me to this very day. Um, he has, he had the power to take a 30 minute sermon and make it feel like it's five minutes long. You know, because he would just like, because it's like you never, um, it never seemed like he was talking at people, but he was talking to them. You know what I mean? And he was making them feel good about themselves. He uh, would relate to them, and um, it was just an overall powerful experience. And so, uh, watching my dad preach growing up, I always wanted to make people feel good about themselves, like he used to, and things of that nature. So, definitely, my mom and dad are um, a pivotal piece as to who I am today. All right, and um. From some of your poems today, one of your poems that I heard that really inspired me was your legacy poem. And if you could pass along your advice for poets or anyone considering the arts, what would it be? I would say to uh, write, some, write about something that you feel strongly about and to always have fun. You know, because when you're having fun, other people have fun. Um, it uh, goes a long way. It, um, and, and also just to believe in yourself too. You know, because um, belief also goes a long way as well, you know, and if there's uh, nobody that uh, says that they believe in you in your corner, I just want you to know that I believe in you. I think that you're very strong and powerful and you, that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and things of that nature. So um, that's my message to anybody who's looking to be a poet or an artist in general. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you.